afternoon everyone it is Christine here and I'm here to start work and plan out what I want to do for the current prompt for Roxy's journal of stitchery down the garden path and the prompt we've got is a garden seat or a garden chair so I've got a couple of ideas and I'm thinking at this stage I'm going to start adding to some of my existing sections or panels that I have created. So I've got two panels in front of me that I thought might be good likely suspects um, for this. One is the garden show piece that I um, created a few prompts um, back which has a little garden display with pots. Um, this was the pot plant prompt and a crinoline lady and a path and I was thinking potentially I could add a garden seat in front of it and I was considering this panel which actually just arrived from the sewing lair quite recently and which has a chair with a garden sort of a stand in the garden with some bread and a flowing um, a robe on it you might have seen that in my um, birthday stash video so if I did that I would be cutting out this piece and sort of sitting it and I'd probably have to continue this fabric down to provide a background um, around it so that's one option although I'm just not sure about how the composition works with the rest of the the piece so not sure about that one but let's take a look at my second idea which I think might be um, even better just fold this up, fold up my garden show piece. So let's take a look at, in fact, the first panel that I did, which is this moonlit wildflower garden where we had the prompt of a wildflowers. And I created, um, oops, moonlit wildflowers coming down into a sunlit garden down the front. And what I'm thinking is that it would be really nice to now start to put something in front of it. And I have this panel, or this piece of fabric actually, um, which I can't quite tell what it is. It's someone, I think it's Sharon, um, based on the, the selvage edge. Um, someone, Sharon, and I noticed that it has a um, beautiful little scene with a cat sitting on a garden seat surrounded with other cats and, and flowers. And I was thinking this could form a really beautiful continuation of um, the garden here. And so that could be more in the background. And then the path that we walk along when we're looking at this could be um, further, further down um, in front of it, sort of down here. It's hard to fit everything on the, on the screen. But yeah, I just think um, these two fabrics... And if I can sort of fussy cut around and then stitch um, this down um, and just sort of join it up with this, that could work really well. So let's just fold it and have a little look at how it would actually look. I'll just move this up so we can see it. So essentially, I think we would be, and it's got a bit of a crinkle, I'm going to have to give it a little iron, but um, I think we would sort of cut around like that. And I'll probably leave the sides and fold them over um, the fabric, just like I've done, done there, because it just gives you a nice um, safe edge that's not going to fray. So I'm just feeling where my fabric is underneath. So if I did that down the sides but we'll have to fold the top over as well just to get a sense of but this is where I think yeah fussy cutting around the flowers um, would work well so that it just merges into the actual the actual background but if it was something I'd probably have to move it over a smidge as well it's obviously not going to sit flat with all that all that folding but I think something like that could just work really really beautifully to then merge into that scene back there um, and yeah I'd cut that little tail tail out and then I guess we could even go as far at this stage I could actually leave it um, all the way down to the 
down to the front or at least yeah, I'm not sure I might even put a different pot plant there I'm not sure how many cats we need probably three is okay I think I'm sure we could always leave this friend down here but possibly when we then merge the next next piece onto this um, yeah we could cover that but I'm thinking I can then do lots of beautiful um, over stitching um, with different threads including some of my beautiful threads that I got for my birthday so I just can't wait to get stuck into those so I think I'll need to use them for this piece so I reckon I'll be pretty happy with that happier than I was um, with the idea of the other one which I just thought just didn't have the right composition but I think this then has a lovely flow down and wouldn't it be delightful to have a seat where you can sit with your your cats or your dogs um, and just have this beautiful backdrop behind you right back to the to the mountains that you can see back there and the moon so we can put aside our original panel and let's just take a look at this panel and work out what threads we might want to use for um, the over stitching so we might pick some threads these are the gorgeous sue spargo threads that i got for my birthday i'm going to tip them out so we can have a good proper look at them um, i'm thinking i want the roses to stand out oops and you can't actually see the roses so let me bring it a bit further down um, I want the roses to stand out but the leaves to be a bit more in the background so I don't think I'll use the pearl thread for the leaves I think I'll use just single strand embroidery or maybe even just a regular cotton to sort of outline and add a bit of texture to those so for the roses I've got that sort of ready silver and I've also got my wonder fill threads as well so let's just have a look at these two so for the pinks, what are my choices I've got? The pink roses, I've got a pinky purple, but that's a bit too much. I've got this pinky red, which could actually be really good, possibly even for the red ones, because it's got the red and the pink that they have in it. So I think that's that's in selection. Um, and then we need a yellow, but we might come to our other, unless I want to use leave that yellow we might give that yellowy orange a bit of a go for these ones at the back here and then I need a pinky pink and white um, for those so I think for those roses I will use that so I'll leave them down so you can can see them so that's the roses sorted and maybe I'll keep the green out um, for that um, yeah, I think I'll, that will be enough of the, unless I want to use any of the pearly on the cat as well. I might keep that actually out because that could be lovely as an accent on the cat. And then I wonder if I actually use some of the grey too. Beautiful glistening coat could be lovely. Even, I might keep that brown out as well. Those to the side. Um, not sure if I need any other ones from this collection. That could even be used. These two could also be used on this cat down here. So I think they'll be fine for that. So that's, that's a few of my new goodies which we'll use on that upper section. Oh, and then we'll need some greens. So I've got a selection here of other other threads that have been wound on, which is a variety of thicker crochet cottons and then just um, regular embroidery floss and then some um, PLA as well or pearl. I've got a variety of pinks that could be useful to use. And then I've got these flowers. I might just need to move the piece up so you can see what's down here below. Um, I'm going to need some yellow. It's got a few yellows there. I'll need a variety of greens, I think, just in the regular embroidery floss. Again, to do the leaves and the other other foliage so I'll keep these ones out 
I've got this variegated, it's like a variegated pearl, but it's very, very soft. So I don't know if it might even be like a, a silk or something. Um, yeah, I got it from Melanie Purveyor of Reclaimed Textiles. Um, so that could even be lovely for some of the some of the flowers down here. I could use the yellows and the pinks and get a variety of the bits done all together. So I'll keep that out. I'm just going to keep out all the greens. Even that um, greeny colour could be nice to do some French knots um, sort of in the under seat area. Although you want that sort of receding back from the seat. And then for the seat itself, I will keep out some black to do some of the outlining. Some grey. I've got a few different greys. Even that grey could be quite good for the cat. And then a darker one, which might be good for adding some texture to the seat. Oops, and we've got one other one. So that gives me a good little grey palette to use. So I'll keep those out. Um, and then, yeah, I do have some other, other pinks, including variegated. So I might just, I'll probably end up keeping most of these um, colours out, just in case the other ones don't don't do the trick. I'm not sure if I'm going to need the green um, pearlays, but I'll keep those in the vicinity. This one's a lovely variegated one, which I could even use for some of the flowers down here. And then another variegated one, which again could work for, well, actually for, for these sorts of ones. And then some other neutral browns, which I could potentially use for the cats. And then some browns as well that could be used for the, the fur of the cat. Some other greens. Um, and then some reds and pinks. So I think I'll just pop them all in. Um, and that way we've got a good selection to, to start with sewing. But I think what we need to do first is to um, cut out this piece. So I said I was going to leave the sides with a bit of an overlap and I'm just looking now to see where my good scissors are. Are they up in the tub where they should be? No, they're not. So we might make a snip and do the old tear, tear method and hope it tears well. Gives us one edge. I really should have given it an iron. It's just got that crease up there, but that's okay. Um, and then I'm thinking I'll leave the, the length down here. Um, and I guess there's no point probably at this stage. I can probably take a bit of the... Let's just look at the width that we've got to work with. So if the chair's in about there, then I can take a small section off the edge, which I might be able to use for something else. <laughs> Then I guess I just need to think about where I start um, coming across and what what I would sort of want merging up with my with my background here. But maybe we'll start just coming across over. I just come across here. So I'll have to do a, um, we'll just be doing raw edge applique on these, these pieces when we put them on. Hopefully it's not a really fray fabric. I've had a fun um, afternoon with my 
nephews and niece and brother and sister-in-law. They came up for lunch and then we headed to the Wilson Botanic Gardens nearby. And that's their beautiful gardens for anyone in Victoria. Um, they're a former quarry site. So there's a big lake down the bottom, but then all these established pine forests and beautiful trees and a good playground for the kids and a lake um, which they've built this really interesting ramp into you where, where you can walk down and it looks like you're descending into the lake itself which you are um, so a great little photo photo spot as well um, what am I doing here Now I might actually, just to make my job easier, I might just cut across here and get rid of a bit of the fabric so I'm just not trying to have as much trouble doing my delicate cutting. hope you can't hear my tummy rumbling. I don't think it should be rumbling. We had a lovely lunch of, of sausage rolls and dips and cheeses and a big salad. I suppose we did go for a big walk and the kids um, had some ice cream this afternoon. Um, but I didn't have an ice cream. I did the other day when I was um, with them, we went out for ice cream and that was absolutely lovely. But can't have ice cream all the time, alas. And so when we got home from the park, we spent the afternoon crafting. So I was working with Emily Rose to make her a little needle book. Um, and Lachlan was working on his own design for a, a little needle fold out um, sort of pad that he can keep on his lap when he's doing some needle craft. So it was fascinating seeing him come up with all these little pockets, pockets for fabric, um, he sewed on it um, a whole lot of little pieces of felt to be his own sort of attached needle book, which is a good idea because he even in the time that he was um, sitting on the couch, he even lost, lost some needles, but we found them. Um, so, yeah. And Bailey was still working on stitching a bandana for the dog. So, again, it's great having all those reverse art truck um fabrics because they're very affordable get a huge bag of goodies for a very low price um, and so yeah it provides lots of affordable supplies for the kids to to play with and I also have buttons from there as well as buttons from the sewing layer so they've each um, taken a good handful of buttons to add to their stitching stitching books Will I take it? I think I might take it across here. Not that we'll probably see much of it. So I hope I'm staying in frame. I don't know if I've got it zoomed too too low. Okay, we'll keep keep that little bit. I'll put that one in my scrap jar. I'm just gonna try and flatten out that bit up the top where it's a little bit um really should have lined it, but never mind. What I might do, it should be okay actually. I'm sure once I stitch it down, it will it will flatten into the fabric. So let's have a look how this is looking. And I don't know whether I'll need to add another bit of this um, of this backing fabric. I might need to actually find that backing fabric unless probably should have left a little bit more or do I just I might actually take what I might do is come down more at that level. How's that going to look if we clip that over? No. 
probably should have actually left a bit more at that edge, but I'm sure I can solve the problem. Either by taking a bit more off of that side. I think I'll need to come down because I want to leave my sunflowers out. It's not quite straight either, is it? So yeah, I think I might come across the back. At least come down a bit further there. That could definitely work, but yeah, I should have just left that little edgy ones um, a little bit more, but I'll be able to stitch those around the corner. Tuck that under there. If I want to. Is that the bit I actually took out from there? It was, wasn't it? But I don't think I need that there, but what I could always do in fact, I can actually just put that bit under there and have it then sitting a bit further across. I reckon that's a good solution. Just put, I only want that section of it. Probably do have to have it up that way. And just tuck that little edge over and then let's just have a look how that looks and then I reckon I probably do want to just take it down a bit further at the back maybe take it so that it just comes down Just taking a little bit more off. That will work well, I reckon. So we just need to cover the base there. I just need to get that bit that bit stitched down and I probably do just now need to then come down and just cut a little bit around these these leaves here but I think that will look quite nice and merge beautifully with that that piece behind so let's just do a little bit extra fussy cutting here Sorry, I'll make sure I'm on camera. So I hope you're all having a good a good week. Hope some others are on on a bit of a break, a bit of a holiday. I know it's school holidays here in Victoria. I'm sure for the parents sometimes it's not as much of a holiday when it's when it's school holidays. Entertaining the kids.
when you don't have kids around all the time and you've suddenly got kids, it is it is pretty full on. I think even Travis the dog, who um, has plenty of energy, I think when the kids head off, he's like, oh, goodness gracious, thank you. Now I can have a rest. Because <laughs> they're always cuddling him, which is, is lovely, lovely to see. Oops, sorry, I'm not on camera again. Probably am too zoomed in. I want to have it so that I can see from above. Get rid of that little loosey bit. So just cutting some of the little leaf, leafy shapes. So what I think I'm going to do now is just quickly grab some YooHoo glue, which I'll just have to step away for a moment, step out the door and grab it and I will be back. And I am coming back. Let's just glue this little piece down. Sometimes find the YooHoo glue is good if you've got raw edges um, and also if you've got a couple of bits, it just helps to hold everything in place while you do what you need to do. I wonder actually, oh no, that's probably okay. Because I think we're only gonna see that little, little bit. I might just move it over a smidge so I can fold the Fold the corner over the edge over. Just put that there and then I'll just put a little bit along along this edge. Just the top edge, just enough to hold. And it doesn't make it stiff or anything, so it's actually really really good but it just means I'm not going to have to have pins in the piece while I'm while I am stitching it down which is always a bonus as well so I want to leave as much of that um, background piece as possible I just need to make sure it's pretty straight let's just check that by folding that over And that's going to be pretty good and I'm happy with that because I didn't want the gray cat that's um, down here to be showing but he's now folded around the folded around the edge um, so I think that will actually work really really well so I think the next thing we have to do besides putting the lid back on the on the glue is to start stitching down this area so we will use just our regular um, it's a color fast polyester um, cotton. Well, not a, not cotton as in the material, but a thread polyester thread. And these are all just threads that I got from my partner's mum. So it's great to use those. She struggles now with hand sewing because of um, arthritis in her in her hands. May that be a very Hopefully it never happens to me, but if it is going to happen, hopefully it will be a very long way away because I can't imagine life without without st loose stitch. Can't imagine what I'd do in the evenings, and it was just such a joy seeing my nephews and nieces really getting getting stuck into and enjoying it all. So let's just start over here. As you can see, there's even a bit of fraying already happening. So I might just chop that little fray piece off. I could have tried my woven interface that I got as part of my birthday goodies, but I was just keen to keen to get stuck in to working on this. So I'm just going to do little... Um, Stitches popping up, little over stitches all along the edge. 
um, I'll flick the sides over once I've got the once I've got it stitched down in place. I just want to keep it nice and flat so I don't end up with any bobbly bobbly bits. But if you do lots of tiny ones, you'll barely see it, and it will just meld the it will just meld the two pieces together. Um, you want to just pick a thread that's got some of the some of the colours in it because I'm sort of got the greenery. I'm thinking I can. Um, have that element with the green thread on my moonlit garden above I use black for a lot of it because of the yeah the shadows almost like little stripes of shadow anywhere that there was was thread I can hear Travis bounding upstairs to come and see me but the the craft room door is closed he's probably coming to to chase up dinner, but his dad can get him, get him some supper tonight. Some carrots and celery and other goodies chopped in the fridge, and he's got some sardines and tuna, human grade sardines. I get the ones in spring water with no added salt, um, which are very good. And then human grade tuna as well. Loves his fish. Makes the kitchen a bit stinky, but that's okay. <laughs> it's slightly fray fabric, but that's okay. We'll just get these stitches in and that will that will tame it. And then once we start doing some over stitching of the flowers as well, um, that will also help. So I'm not going to worry about the little bits of um, darker thread showing through on these yellow flowers because I'll be able to do possibly I'm not even sure what these yellow ones are meant to be maybe I'll just do some little stitches around to create like um, petals or I might do some French knots to create some bobbly flowers see what I feel like oops do we have a knot nope we've just got an, a tail bit stuck through I don't know how those of you that have got entire um, rolls all joined together yet, it must get quite quite tricky to, to manage it all. Even just having these this extended piece, it's, um, it's enough to be grappling with. But that's why I'm going to join most of my pieces together towards the end, unless I start getting ones like this where the, the pieces naturally meld into the, the piece behind or in front. Still don't know exactly how it's all going to come together, um, but I kind of want to wait till I've got done all the prompts and just have a have a look at them. Whether they stay as some standalone pieces that I could frame up, or um, or whether I integrate them all into a bigger a bigger panel with other fabrics um, sort of patchworked um, around them. Don't know. Or go with the original um, plan, which will be a, a very long um, garden hanging sort of piece. Not sure. All back to the very original idea of um, yeah, wrapping them around the wooden handle of my wooden stitching basket. Well, I do think it would be nice to have them have them on display, and they're quite textural pieces as well. So. Um, some of the elements I wouldn't want to be be crushing, but it's so lovely to be um, yeah seeing all the everyone's creations for those that are sharing them here on YouTube, but also um, people sharing them in the the Facebook group. There's been so many lovely garden chairs like made with doilies, um, stitched ones, yeah, really lovely. lovely ideas but I just thought this piece I may as well use it it was just a, a remnant that I got from Melanie from purveyor of reclaim fabrics and when else am I going to have a, a garden chair prompt to, to make use of it so as you'll see I'm just doing lots of tiny little stitches all the way along the edge of the cut fabric 
is that will just stabilise it into the piece and then when we give us a base on which we can then do the further, the further stitching. Where I've got the green, I can go down a bit further into the fabric. Um, That actually caught on my caught on my finger, which was a bit rough. Fingers are a bit rough after being up on the roof. It's fixing up a fixing up a slipped tile. That was yesterday, I think it was. Yeah, yesterday. Time merges a bit into one when you're not working. It's it's Wednesday today. I think we've still got quite a lot of prompts um, to go with this project because it goes till the end of June and we're only midway through April so we've got all of April, May and June to go so we're only just a bit past the, the halfway mark. So that could be quite a lot of quite a lot of prompts to come our way yet. There's a bit of fraying going on in the middle where it was cut down, so I might just do some over stitching there um, just to stabilise those leaves. I don't know if I need to turn on the, the lights now because it is starting to get darker earlier now that daylight saving has ended. Ended up being a nice day today. They'd forecast quite a bit of rain, but yeah, the afternoon's been, been clear. There was a little bit of rain, or oh, actually a fair bit this morning, so I had a a leisurely start with Travis. I was just winding some threads onto some bits of cardboard so the kids had some good threads to use. Um, and I'll have to give them a few more for their, their needle books. Um, oops, there we go. Pulled through, which is good. So yeah, leisurely morning, stayed in my pyjamas with Travis down on the couch, did some winding on our threads, had a coffee and had some leftover hot cross buns. Thought we were almost finished with our hot cross buns, but then my mum gave me, um, gave me a few packs of them. Normally she makes them, but this year was one of the first years where she didn't, didn't make hot cross buns. I think she's been quite busy, um, with the with the kids and family visiting because um, Rob and Michelle go with the kids go around there most nights I think actually every night they've been around for for dinner so she's been busy catering to to all their tastes um, and they the family's off to Rob Michelle and the kids are off to the penguins tomorrow so I organized that for them as a nice little gift while they're in Melbourne and have booked a hotel down at Phillip Island um, for the night for them because you go and watch the penguins coming ashore um, at Phillip Island these are fairy penguins so the really small small peng penguins um, and they come waddling up the the shore after being out at um, sea and feeding and it's an amazing, amazing spectacle. And it's something the kids really wanted to do. They had watched the film. I forget the name of the film, but um, it's about the Marema dogs that protect the penguin colony down on the Great Ocean Road. Um, and so they were quite keen to, to go and see the penguins. And I knew that it was going to be school holidays when they were visiting us here. And so I thought it could very easily get all booked out. So I didn't want to leave it till they... They got here so um, yeah had a chat with my sister-in-law and then organized it for them got them tickets for a special pre-ranger tour um, and 
then the ranger comes and sits with them in a front row position. So Emily Rose will have a good view of the, the penguins um, and the kids. Although Bailey and Lachlan, they're pretty, pretty tall, so I'm sure they'd be able to see over other people. But Emily Rose is still pretty small. Um, and so they'll watch that. And then it's my sister-in-law um, Michelle's birthday tomorrow, so they're going to have a nice dinner um, as a family and then go and, um, yeah, they'll go back to their hotel. They've got them a nice hotel with a pool so the kids are taking down their their, towel, uh, their bathers so they can have a have a swim before the penguins because I think they can check in and use the facilities even if the, the room's not ready when they arrive. So they'll go and spend the day down at Phillip Island tomorrow. So as I mentioned, I'm not worried about those little green stitches. One, they could look like um, little leaves, but also I'm going to be going over the flowers um, with over stitching to create quite textural flowers. So the green will disappear away in that process. It's really nice when the two pieces of fabric just start to sort of meld meld together and you can't necessarily tell where one begins and the other ends. I do have it upside down so I hope no one's sort of feeling feeling squeamish looking at an upside down garden. But I really did love this first piece. It was so much fun to put together so much stitching because um, there are a lot of individual layers in the moonlit component of the the garden which all had to be stitched down like this around the around the edges get a bit I hope I get to the end of this and then we can um, get a bit of the start to stitch down the not stitch down start to stitch some of the flowers with the variegated Sue Spargo razzle dazzle thread I think it was razzle dazzle I hope I'm not making up a new name for Sue Spargo's thread so I shared my birthday haul video yesterday a belated sharing of it because I just hadn't had time to look through it all so it was the perfect chance to pop on the video and really have a proper good look at it with all of you because I hadn't opened up quite a few of the I'd opened up the outside of the packages but not actually looked inside and had a really good play around with what was in there so thanks everyone for the birthday wishes it's a lot of fun to have some new goodies to play with um, most of the things I get are actually sort of yeah reclaimed second hand so it's sometimes nice to get something something brand new as well when it's something that you it's hard to find in in that sort of yeah that second hand market some of the new products like the really glistening um, variegated threads Easier to go this way now. As you can see, the yuhu doesn't sort of stick it really hard and hard and fast, but it did just stick it down enough that I didn't have to put. Um, pins in which was pleasant not to be stitching with pins even though I just managed to stab myself with my needle then but not badly thankfully oh, managed to unthread the needle 
Doesn't it always happen when you're just nearing the end and you're like, yep, I'm on my way, getting where I need to go, and then it happens. So, no, yeah, we're not getting another prompt um, tonight, are we? Being Wednesday, I think no, they'll, they'll be still working on, on this piece, although lots of people seem to have actually finished theirs already. I'm starting pretty late because I was working on my Easter snippet rolls which I've shared in um, some other videos. Shared the finished product but also the sort of the making of Emily Rose's one um, which she just loved as well. Even the boys lo loved their flags and Silvano loved his Trieste one. Posted it um, and his friends and our rallies in um, Trieste, they they loved seeing it as well on, on Facebook. And Max liked his wine inspired one with the stitched wine bottle and the, the grape fabric. And yep, I got the right colour schemes for Michelle and for Ella Day as well. Um, I picked them well. one or two more stitches and I might just do a few around this edge as well got stuck in the fabric there we go oops lost my needle down here don't unthread yourself Tingling, getting everything, isn't it? It's always the way. As you approach the finishing line, it just decides not, it's not going to be that easy for you. Okay, I think I'm almost out of out of thread. I can maybe get one or two more stitches in. Do you do the same thing? You just keep trying to squeeze a few more stitches <laughs> out of your last our last little bit of thread. Okay, I think we're at the point where we need to Tie it off at the back. Okay. Let's put that in my little thread jar to keep the desk clean. So there we go. It is now melding beautifully with the with the background. I really like that because it sort of melds back into the back into the Little. Hopefully, I haven't gone too crooked. I don't think I did. Right, that looks good, and that will just fold around and under. That will be great. Really good. Okay, well, let's just have a quick play around, and I might need a slightly thicker needle. What were we thinking? We we're thinking the this one for the 
paler pink roses and this one for the ready ones so this one's got plastic on it i really want to have a play with the razzle the wonderful razzle from sue spargo let's see if i can battle my way into it otherwise it could be <laughs> it could be a while to get into it if i don't get some assistance from the scissors don't need a little rubbish bin too. Oh, it's sort of. I don't know where it's meant to actually come off from. Where is that end? There's an end down there. It's very, very. It's really sort of. Oh, there's the end. Okay. End. We need you. I'm sure I'll be um, taking a section of this off onto some little card anyway, because it looks like these are going to be very unravelly. So I don't want to use too much because I don't want to damage or sort of flatten the thread in the process. And I will want a needle with a decent, it's quite a large, long needle, but that's okay. We'll give that a go. I just don't want something that's going to squash, squash the pearl, eh? Or the pearl. Very nice and um, so slidey. Slidey is the word I'm going to use for it. So what do I want to do? Do I want to start? Let's just see. I might do a French knot to start in the middle. Very exper experimental today. Let's do a double French knot. Gone a little bit bobbly, so I'm going to just come up, pop up, and do an extra little knot to hold that, a little stitch to hold that in place. Because I ended up with an extra loop. I probably could have done a single French knot, possibly. That's good though. That gives me a nice little rose buddy center. And then I was thinking I could just do some stitches sort of radiating around to make like the petals, unless I do some bullion knots to make the petals, I'm not sure. Let's see how we go if I do it this way. Oops, what have I done? It's tangling underneath. ratty end we'll come back to where that stitch was oh, I've got the thread too long Actually, just pop up next to each of the pieces just to save the thread and not use too much thread in one go. And I suppose the ones that are a bit more in the foreground, I could even do the bullion knots for those ones so that they're even a bit more, bit more textural. I'll give this a go and see if I like how this is looking and then if I do I can I can do that on the other the other rows as well so just popping up next to where I do the stitch just so that I'm not wasting thread sort of going too far forward and then coming coming back if that makes sense. This way you use less thread. Got, yep, 
Let's just check I don't have a lot of loop. Nope, I don't have a loop at the back. Don't want to waste thread that way either. So I'm starting to see some of that variation in the colour come out. Let's go on to a lighter, lighter pinky colour. It's a lovely looking thread, just so glistening. So we're almost coming up to the hour mark, so I don't want to go longer than that, but I want to get as much of this, this rose done as possible so you can see that. And then I'll probably go away and stitch down the rest of the, the piece because you don't need to see more of that sort of over, over stitching. Um, and then we can come back and do some more of the the embellishment of the piece which will be a lot of fun I can see we'll soon be getting some more of the ready As you can see, I'm overlapping the whole um, of the edge where we did that um, over stitching just to secure everything. And that way you won't see where those little green, green stitches are. So there's that beautiful pinky, pinky red showing. Do one more stitch up around the, the top and then the rest will be down sort of below and to the side. Oops, it's a very sharp needle. It actually popped out the other, up in the other bit of the fabric where it was overlapping. Don't want to stick this needle into my finger, that's for sure. so that I don't don't waste thread don't waste the pretty thread so yeah it gives lovely color variation it definitely works really well for that Actually wondering, I might with this slightly lighter colour just put a few stitches 
further out just to get that coloration sort of variation Actually, that's the thing, you don't even have to have all the threads totally touching each other because you can actually have a bit of the fabric showing through as well and that gives you some other colour colour variation also. So I'll stitch around the outside. And I just try and overlap the stitches a little bit so it does get that kind of petally effect to it. So there's lots of different ways to paint with thread. This is one of them. Just using these little long and long and short stitches to um, create the effect of, of petals. That rosette shape, um, yeah, works really well with this sort of style of stitching. So you're just following the broad sort of shape of the, the way the flower is sitting. So you're following the sort of the design, the design shape. And if you start at the middle and then sort of work your way out, it, um, it should go pretty, pretty well. And if you do get any sort of mis misplaced stitches, either you can just sort of keep stitching and stitch over them, or if you really don't think it's it's fit for purpose, you can just um, take that take that stitch out. But generally, it's that sort of massing effect you get with this painting with thread. Um, that yeah, it doesn't. It's the combination of all the stitches that really make the make the piece. Now I've got that more vibrant pinky red. So as you can see, it's quite a lot of stitches that you end up doing. Um, I'm just going to intersperse this pinky red between the other pinky layers. Oops, just unthreaded my needle. believe how quickly an hour goes when I'm hanging with you guys and stitching away. You guys, that's not very good with um, you lovely people. I do really feel like you are just sitting here down the end of my table and I'm chatting away to you. And I love the, the chats that we have over the, the comments as well always brings a smile to my day. So thank you for everyone that um, likes and, and comments and um, those that subscribe because that way we can keep in touch. I can I always check if people have got their own own channel and own videos and always always subscribe um, to fellow fellow crafters and provide support for what you're creating. But even if you don't have um, a channel and videos, yeah, just so appreciative of you stopping by and, and watching. So there you go. There is a beautiful razzle-dazzle, a rose. Really, really happy with how that's come out. Beautifully textured. And I think those are just going to be so lovely in, the, in this garden scene. So lots to be done. 
Don't know whether I'll try, as I say, um, doing maybe some bullion knots on the other ones, but I'll be sure to come back in another video and show you um, where we get to. But for now, here we are with our, our cats. Would have been nice to have Labradors, but I don't have a, a Labrador piece of fabric like this. So cats it is, and we'll have to incorporate Travis somewhere else in the garden. Um, but yeah, back to our beautiful sunlit garden. And I just think this, yeah, goes in really beautifully and I just can't wait to work on all the, all the embellishments like that. So have a lovely evening, folks, or day if you're just starting out your day or enjoying your day. And I will be back soon to keep working on this. Bye, everyone.